Hey -o, Omni Dogs and Omni Kittens. It's Omni Dog here with a review of the books I've been reading recently. Haven't had a review in a while, so I thought this would be a good chance to show you what I've been reading. And we'll start out right away with a book that I didn't expect to care for as much as I did, but I really liked it a lot, and that was Pearl by Brian Michael Bendis with amazing art by um, Michael Gatos. Um, first, I'm going to tell you why I liked it. Uh, of course, the art is amazing. The art is just incredibly amazing. And it deals with a very specific, specific subject matter. She, uh, the pearl in this is an albino Japanese woman who is uh, not only a very good tattoo artist, but it turns out she is a natural assassin. And this book involves the Yakuza presence in San Francisco. Um, now, I know nothing about tattoos, so I thought this book was really interesting because it delves into the world of tattoos, but it also delves into the world of uh, the Yakuza and its um, influence in San Francisco. And then she also journeys to Japan because she needs to get some things straight because things have gone sour between her and the local Yakuza in San Francisco. It also involves her mother and father. Um, and it is a trip. I loved this book because it was so uh, out of the box for me. This is by Brian Michael Bendis. It was so out of the box for me to see a young woman um, take on uh, the establishment sort of Yakuza as she does. It features a couple of other subplots. She tattoos her whole face uh, one night, and it only shows up when she's upset or um, she gets flushed. So she looks completely albino and unless she gets angry or something, and then all these tattoos appear on her face. Um, but this is really well drawn and really well written. It's two volumes. It's Pearl, but it comes with a caveat. I don't think this book is for everyone. It's for me, but I'm not sure it's for everyone. Um, it's, it's two volumes um, that deal with how she, uh, she's totally kick-ass in the book. She is very much in charge of her life at all times, which I think is really cool. Um, the ending is fine as far as I'm concerned. I enjoyed the ending, but something about it tells me, unless you're 100% sold on my recommendation, you may want to try it out online on Comixology or something digitally first. Give it a go because it's very different. It's not. Um, it's very different than the normal Brian Michael Bendis stories, um, and it is very different. I loved it, but my caveat is you should probably try it out digitally first to see if you're going to like it. My next book is out of print but not hard to find. You can find it on eBay for like 17 bucks and it's worth it. Don't go to Amazon. They're charging like $1,000 or something ridiculous. For no, actually, if you go to eBay, I'm sorry, if you go to Amazon and look in the used section and get a good copy from like a half price books, you'll get like a brand new copy. So you can, and the book is The Nobody by Jeff Lemire. Uh, so go to Amazon, used books, look for a reputable seller that lists it in good condition, or go to eBay and get it there for like $15. It's a cover price of $20, so don't pay more than that. Uh, it's a great book, though. I really enjoyed it. It involves a guy that shows up dressed all in bandages in a very small town. And he never leaves the sort of uh, cheap motel room he checks into. He's all in bandages. Uh, he never leaves it. And, of course, this small town is all abuzz about the stranger that has appeared in their midst. Uh, and the daughter of the diner 
that uh, the nobody visits sort of takes an interest in him and decides to start delivering him food and trying to befriend him. This is all Jeff Lemire writing and illustrating. And it turns out he's a professor and he's working on a bit of a um, experiment still in his room. And he has some people after him, so he's trying to keep a low profile. And prejudice sort of starts emerging already in the small town when some weird things start happening and they start blaming the newcomer, even though he never leaves his room. Um, and I don't want to spoil any surprises for you um, to tell you any more about it, other than this is a really good read. It's a fast read. It's a short read. But it's a really cool read, and I really enjoy it when you find out who the nobody is and what he does uh, in his experiments and um, the people he befriends. He's, he's very prickly, so he doesn't make many friends, but the people he runs into and how he affects the town and the town's prejudices are uh, really remarkable. So this is a great book by Jeff Lemire. And it's out of print, but as I said, easy to find. The next book I read, I don't know how I got this book. I think I saw it in, on InStockTrades.com listed as a new listing. And the premise sounded interesting to me. Um, and I will, the artwork is really cool. It's called Sex, Death, Revolution. And it's about the occult. It's about a witch's coven. Um, I'll read, as I show you art, I'll read from the back. Well, no, I can just tell you. It's about a young woman who is uh, in a witch's coven that dissolves. Um, and as it dissolves, suddenly somebody is rewriting her past life. Her past life starts changing. And things, uh, all the rules are being broken. Um, Pictures are being changed. People are being written out of her life. People have different opinions of her. They think she's done things she hasn't. And an important part of this is that she's transgender. She was a man and she transgendered. She trans into a woman. She has a girlfriend that she's very close to uh, that lives with her, who is also a Wiccan, also a witch. And so the book is a big mystery as to who is rewriting her life and why. Um, I found this to be really compelling and interesting. It's got the requisite amount of witchcraft in it to make it interesting to me. Um, and it's a key part of it that she's transge transgender. Um, pe you know, pe people start treating her different because her past is being rewritten by somebody. I think that whole concept is fascinating. And I recommend this book wholeheartedly. It's from Black Mask. If you're into witches at all, uh, the occult, uh, human interest, it's got drama in it, um, and it's got a really, really good ending that I didn't see coming, but makes total sense. So I recommend Sex, Death, Revolution from Black Mask. Let me show you some more artwork, because the artwork's really good. It, these are two people from her former coven. So that's that. Then we'll finish with three Batman books. I've already talked about two of them on Batterdays, so I'm not going to give them a ton of time here. Um, Last Night on Earth, I read. And we reviewed it. Uh, Taylor Brown and I reviewed it on uh, Batterdays in the Batcave. Last Night on Earth. Um, deals with kind of an interesting thing. Bruce Wayne wakes up in like Arkham Asylum um, and they're treating him as if Batman was um, something he made up. They're treating him as a, a patient in Arkham Asylum. Batman never existed. He created him in his mind. So this part of the book starts out really well. First of all, the art by Greg Capullo has never been better, I don't think. This part of the book starts out really well. And then we get into 
some more complex stuff about the end of the DC days. Um, and if you can see there, he's carrying the Joker's head in a lantern. And the Joker gets all the best lines in the book. He's carrying around the Joker's, he's carrying around the Joker's head right here um, in a lantern. How the Joker's alive, I don't know, comics. But he discovers an underground resistance to all the problems that have destroyed the DC universe. There's Wonder Woman. Um, Poison Ivy's involved. Um, and it, it involves a super criminal, super overlord named Omega. In my opinion, I think this book just got too complex. And I lo loved how it started. Uh, I love the conceit of having the Joker's head in a lantern. Um, but to me, I feel like there was just too much of this going... Um, too much trying to get crammed into one book. So I enjoyed it for what it was, um, which was it's considered Snyder's last Batman book. Um, it's not his strongest Batman book by any means, but I thought it was interesting. It, it may be something you want to try digitally before you spend the money on it um, in hardcover. Certainly beautiful. Greg Poole's art is awesome. I would give this a solid B minus as a book. Um, it is a beautiful book. Uh, the next book we reviewed already is Kurt Busiek's Creature of the Night. First problem, don't compare it to Superman's Secret Identity. Secret Identity is one of the top three Superman stories ever written. Ever, 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 ever. And nothing could ever come up to that. But this is a sim in a similar vein where it's a kid named Bruce Wainwright who has his parents taken from him um, at an early age. And he has an uncle that he calls Alfred that um, can't, uh, who sends him to a private boarding school because the uncle can't take care of him because this is back in the 60s and the uncle is gay and uh, feels like it, it wouldn't um, it wouldn't look good given his lifestyle for him to have his nephew there um, with him. He'd do better in a boarding school, which Bruce finally figures out. He thought his uncle didn't like him, and he finally figured out that it was because of the political sensitivities of the time. Meanwhile, he wants justice, Bruce Wainwright does, and something starts to happen where he's living, uh, Boston. Uh, a bat-like creature starts to manifest itself and um, take revenge on uh, uh, street crime and stuff. Here's a picture of the creature. What this thing is would be giving the book away. And how he comes to realize it. First of all, this is a great study in uh, human development and human emotion because it shows Bruce Wainwright growing up, becoming the founder of the Wainwright Foundation because his uncle took a small inheritance and uh, invested it wisely for him. Um, but this is a great case study of a kid that wants justice and can't seem to find it and is haunted for his whole life and what he turns into what he becomes like and it deals with the manifestation of the vengeful bat and what that actually is um so no this is no secret identity but that's not a fair comparison uh, you need to judge this book on its own i give this book an a minus i enjoyed it i loved it all the way through the art is really good and it's by john paul leon um so i I really enjoyed this. There's even a Robin involved in it, but she's not a crime-fighting Robin. Um, it touches on a lot of really cool points um, in Bruce Wainwright's life and how he grows up and what he becomes. And I highly recommend this book. Now, this is the last book, and I can't talk about it very much because Taylor Brown and I are reviewing it 
on a Badder Days in the Batcave soon. So I promised Taylor I wasn't going to talk about it a lot, but I have to tell you, you need to go buy it now, wherever you can get it. Buy this book because it is super fun, really well written, uh, beautiful art, incredibly imaginative, um, involves, it's a Batman book, and it involves Batman being a little chattier than normal, a little wittier, but he never breaks character, and there's a ton of great cameos in it, and that is Brian Michael Bendis's Batman Universe, with art by Nick Darrington. I believe this is a compilation of all the 100-page issues that were distributed in Walmart. This book is a freaking blast. I cannot tell you how much I've enjoyed a Batman story uh, in years, as much as I've enjoyed this one. Somebody employs the Riddler. Uh, I'll just give you a quick synopsis. Synopsis. Somebody employs the Riddler to steal a Fabergé egg. There's something in the Fabergé egg that bends time and reality and sends Batman through a journey um, where uh, he not only uh, hooks up with Green Lantern and Cyborg, but this is my favorite part. He hooks up with Jonah Hex in the Old West. This is great. This, And I don't want to talk about it more because I promised Taylor. So I am just 100% recommending this book. A plus. A plus. This is... One of the best things Bendis has written in years. A super huge scoop of fun that uh, does not break character for the Batman. He's still Batman in it. He may be a little chattier and quippier than before, but he's not like Batman 66 or something. This is a really remarkable story that you need to own. So get Batman Universe right now. Wait till the video's over and then go get order it from wherever you can order it. This book is 100% my book of the week. And here's how far I'm, how much I like it. Harleen is number one for my books of the year so far. This is number two. You will read this and have fun. And that's what this channel is all about. Having fun and not judging. So thank you for tuning in. Please hit the like button. Please subscribe. Please feel free to leave a comment. I always respond to comments. And uh, thank you for watching. I appreciate all of my viewers. I really do. Peace and love. Peace and love.